Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeff. I'm the log father. And I'm based on beautiful South Shore, Nova Scotia, Canada. And we do a lot of milling, a lot of firewood, uh, some tractor, some logging, some mechanical work. I'm a mechanic by trade, retired. I was uh, a Volkswagen Audi mechanic for 35 years. And I still have a passion for the old camper vans and just loved what I did for a long time, but had an opportunity to, to retire, so I did. So. What I'm doing now is something that is passionate as well because my dad was a sawyer, my grandfather was a sawyer, and I'm just getting into the forestry industry. I'm a few years into it now and love every minute of it. So so thanks for dropping in to watch. And if there's anything that you get even remotely entertained, don't be afraid to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps my little channel grow. So.
kindling. <laughs> we got a, an order for a couple of dozen bundles of kindling. You guys know that I take to a rental place not very far from here. And they sell, they might sell a dozen a week probably of kindling, maybe a dozen of hardwood and a dozen of softwood. So I need to extract from these bags and the racks that you see behind me. And I keep the tarp over a couple of those bags just to make sure that the wood stays as dry as it can. And then we split them, leave them open split like that for a day. And then we'll bundle them up and take them over. So kindling is three quarters of a cubic foot. And the softwood and hardwood is a core, a, a cubic foot and a quarter. So it's a, it's a good healthy size bundle. And right now we retail all of our bundles or retail or wholesale, whoever buys them. We just charge across the board. We just learned to, to price out at six bucks a bundle for everything. And that seems to be the, the going rate for everybody. The rental store charges them up you know, it adds a couple of bucks to that price and, and uh, somebody wants to, to pay what they pay, they got to come here to get them when it's convenient for us, not so necessarily convenient for them because when, when I'm processing firewood, I don't really want to have to stop to try to collect six bucks or 12 bucks or something like that. But Mrs. Logfather will bundle all of this up tomorrow and get them where we need to, to take them. So she'll load the little truck and deliver them to the to the rental place and they pay right away. So that's my favorite part of that job. So anyway, that's not the reason I started this video today. I just wanted to get this done so that these would thaw out. I can put this whole ATV in the garage on the heat and then uh, we can bundle them up. But I've got 16 foot logs to extract from the back of a pile of 12 foot logs. And I've got about I'm gonna say 60 to 80 logs I have to move to get to my 16 foot logs for a milling order. I need to make up, I think just 10 pieces of two by 10, 16 feet long, 14 feet long actually, but I need the 16 foot logs to do it. And I need to make up a couple of dozen four by fours. So I'm gonna to try to get at that this afternoon. And uh, I broke my throttle cable the other day on my sawmill in the cold. There's a plastic lock knob. It's uh, what I use for throttle cable on my sawmill is a PTO engagement cable. So it's got that, if you've ever seen one, if you've been around a fire truck or anything at all, they've got a, a black pull knob that you'd pull up and then a lock at the bottom. And in the middle of that knob on the top is a just a, a red button that you'd push and it disengages a little spring-loaded ball in the middle like a detent ball so that you can quickly if you had to abort the mission, you can quickly um, shut the mill off, you know, shut down to an idle, and then of course the blade stops turning if something bad were to happen, or the PTO, or whatever you're operating with that cable. <sighs> anyway, long-winded story to say that it was so cold the other day when I was milling, it was somewhere around minus 20 in the morning, got that plastic knob on the top just cracked right in the middle, and I pulled that, that, that actuator off in my hand, cable and all. So I've been using the throttle on the front of the motor, which is less than ideal, which means I gotta walk around, throttle it up, make my cut, walk around, throttle it down, bring the, this uh, mill back, but a bit of a pain in the bum, but the worst, it's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I've got a new cable coming. They're not expensive, like 42 bucks or something. So for a doorman, which is probably made in China, but it's it lasted hundreds of hours on the mill before. So another one will last hundreds of hours again. And if I would just come to the conclusion that m milling or making firewood below minus 20, minus 10, that should be my cutoff. It always has been my arbitrary limit that if it's minus 10, I don't go out to mill or I don't go out to make firewood because bad stuff seems to happen to plastic parts and just just never works good. It's a day that I should just go in the woods and cut wood. Chainsaw, that'll work to any temperature. And I got heated grips on my good saw. Well, they're all good saws, but my 261 is my favorite go-to saw, the Eliminator. If I have a lot of big wood to, to cut, like big blocks of wood from my firewood business, then I use my CM400, which is a good saw. It's a medium-sized saw, lots of power. Feels exactly the same to me as my 261. The 400's got a 25 inch bar. The, four, the 261's got a 20 inch bar. Power to weight, identical. And I have an MS250 as well, which is a saw I've had for oh, a dozen years or more. It's just a, it's sort of the utility saw that I used to carry on my old ATV. I put it on this as well, just if you've got limbs in the road or you got a couple of trees down in the road, I just use that saw because, you know, 16 inch bar and it's light and it's super easy on fuel. And, and uh, I had to rebuild the carburetor in that actually, because it sat long enough that the top diaphragm that would push down on the, on the needle inside the carburetor was stiff. And 
maybe for 10 minutes after you run it, it would bog down but once the gas got in it and working around it would get pliable enough that it would run but not well so for 20 bucks or something i went to ocr our local steel dealer and bought a kit for that and overhauled the carburetor and now that little saw runs like brand new again so it was a project why do you wait so long to do those little projects i've been putting up with that bogging for months and months so now it works like new so anyway Let's turn this camera around, get that tractor going. I got the grapple on it, and I'm going to just start taking pot logs from one pile, make another pile. This is something I've been wanting to do anyway. It's not going to be a waste of time as much as it is going to be a, an effort in organizing my logs. I want to get the old logs out from behind the pile to the front of the pile, and then I'll be able to put the, the freshest logs to the back of the pile so that I don't get rotten logs, and I can turn those logs that I've already bought and paid for into money as they need to be processed. So anyway, end of that story. Let's go watch me play with the tractor and the grapple. <laughs>
So I've got to extract a extension cord from the ice. Can you see that yellow extension cord that runs along there? That powers my mill in the winter time. Powers the blower, powers the lights. Ha, I was expecting that to be frozen solid. So that took me just about a half an hour to extract 50, 60, 80 logs, and a ton of logs, you saw them all. And there, this ice that's stuck in here, there's three or four inches of ice in between a lot of these logs. So it's gonna take a bit of effort to get them broken apart. But this guy that I'm milling this lumber for is a great friend. He brings me logs sometimes, he's an arborist himself. He's been in the industry, I think he's 67 years old, and the guy still climbs trees for a living. So I'm gonna help him out the best I know how. There's lots of nice logs in here we'll get 16 foot material out of to make 14 foot material out of so that he can deck his new truck, new to him truck. So I think he's got an F550, I believe, Ford that he's putting a new flat deck on. So I'm gonna uh, give him a call and see if we can adjust his plans to make two by eights instead of two by tens because there's a whole lot more lumber in here that we can make two by eights out of, or logs rather, that we can make two by eights out of rather than two by 10. Should be, the difference is the odds. It's, I can't see there being any issue whatsoever. And there'll be a, a few that we can make two by tens out of if he's trying to make sideboards or something like that. So anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap this, this, this video up right here. And tomorrow morning, we're gonna get back at, in, get in the sawmill. I'm just gonna start milling these logs first thing in the morning get them wrapped up, get them delivered to him so that he can get his flat deck um, 
put together. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun. This is the kind of day I like. I made a cord of wood this morning, delivered it. Made a buggy full of kindling, which is important for us so that we can do some bundles. Uh, there's a dozen or more bundles over there probably of kindling. And break some logs apart and use my tractor. This is a little tractor that could. I keep talking about replacing this tractor, but it seems like every time I do a job like this, this tractor's doing everything I ask it to do. Maybe I should just run it till the wheels fall off. It's It's been amazing. And I just wish it had a little higher lift capacity and breakout for us. But I got a backhoe for it, I got a mower for it, bush hog, grapple, buckets. I don't know. And it's paid for. No more payments. That's my favorite part. So I don't want to have to turn back the clock on payments on this machinery. So anyway, I don't have to say more about this. Appreciate you watching. Over and out, everybody.